Over the next several videos, I'll introduce you to all of the main ways you can input MIDI into Logic, including programming MIDI note by note, using step input, and other methods. But to start, we're going to talk about using software instruments with a MIDI controller and how to make basic MIDI recordings and quantize those MIDI recordings. So I've got a brand new Logic project pulled up here, and we're going to create a software instrument track, a MIDI software instrument track. Truly, the MIDI and pattern tracks are the same type of track. They're both software instrument tracks when you select software instrument here. Whether you use a pattern region or you play in MIDI, it's all still MIDI data. Now, when you create a new software instrument, typically Logic is going to create a default patch, and that default patch is going to be a classic electric piano. I'm going to hit delete, and what I like to do is I like to start with an empty channel strip. However, you can choose one of Logic's software instruments from here, so you can start off with that instrument, or you can also choose to start off with a third-party instrument down here. So let's just start with an empty channel strip. I'm going to create two tracks, and there we go. These are our two empty software instrument tracks. Now, when you get to this point, there are two ways you can select instruments. You can either select an instrument preset from the library. And remember, you can close and open the library by pressing Y. So I could go down to piano here and I could choose the concert grand. And that's going to load up a library preset, which is going to include the software instrument itself here in green. So this is the studio piano plugin. And then everything in blue after this is an audio effect. So we've got an EQ on here and we've got some reverb on here as well. And then you can also add MIDI effects to this, things like arpeggiators and whatnot. And another thing about using software instruments in Logic is you don't have to record enable the track or input monitor the track like you have to do with audio in order to hear the audio coming through the channel. All you have to do is make sure that the track is selected and then play a few notes on your MIDI controller to make sure you're getting sound. Another way to load up your software instruments is to load them up manually from here and create your own custom channel strip setting. So right here in the instrument insert slot, I can just choose any software instrument I want from Logic. I'll go ahead and choose the Studio Piano again. And I want a, a different reverb, a, a warmer reverb on there. So on the audio effects, I'll go down to reverb, I'll go to Space Designer, and I'll choose a reverb preset from Space Designer. I'll go with this dark piano hall, and I'll pull back the wet signal a little bit. Now, before we start recording MIDI, there's a couple of things we should check. First, go up to Logic Pro Settings Audio, and from here, make sure your buffer size is set to a lower value. This is going to reduce latency while recording. Typically, you only want to use a higher buffer size when you're mixing or producing or doing any other like processing intensive tasks where there's a bunch of plugins loaded up. Whereas when you're recording, you want to use a lower buffer size because this will reduce the latency. Now, recording latency is less of an issue for MIDI recordings than it is for audio recordings. But if you're playing along and it feels like the notes are slightly delayed from when you're pressing them, go ahead and drop your buffer size and that should resolve the problem. Another thing you can check out is the display at the top of your project here. If you click right here and go to custom, you'll see your MIDI input monitor. That's this no in section. And if I play a note, it'll show me the type of MIDI message. So that little quarter note is showing us that that's a note on message. The one is the channel number, so channel one. And then the C3 is the pitch itself, the note itself. And then the number to the right of that is its velocity. So if I play softer, I'll get lower values. If I play harder, I'll get higher values. Again, remember velocity is a value between zero and 127. And when you have a velocity of zero, like when I release a key, that is signifying a note off message. So that's why when I play a note and then release it, you see that zero there. Now, this MIDI monitor is also very helpful for showing you uh, what chords you're playing. So for example, if I play a C minor seven, it'll tell me it's a C minor seven. If I play another chord, E flat major seven. So if there's ever a chord that you are unfamiliar with, 
A flat major seven with a ninth. Logic will tell you what chord you're playing. Okay, so to keep myself in time while I make a recording, I'm gonna add in a drum part. I'm gonna add in a drummer, and I'm gonna use the pop songwriter for this. And I'm also gonna lower the tempo down. Let's go from 100 down to like 88. And then here's what this pop drummer sounds like. Now you can edit any of the session player's settings down here in the session player editor. If you don't see that, you can double click on a session player region to open it up, or you can press E to hide and show the editor. Let's pull down the intensity on this drum beat. I just want something to keep me in time. Okay, now when I'm recording MIDI, I typically don't like to start right at bar one. So often what I'll find myself doing is starting at bar two or creating a zero bar. And you can do that by clicking this little tab right here and dragging it over to the left. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see we get a zero bar. And if you keep going, you'll actually get negative bars. So if you want your bar lines or bar numbers rather to match up with the music, you can just pull back that little tab and create a zero bar. I'm also going to turn off my count in. And if you want your metronome to be louder or softer while recording, you can adjust those settings right here. Okay, and I'm just going to drag out the tail end of the drummer session player by just one little, by a little bit more, just to add one final crash to that last chord. Now, all of the little white lines, those are all MIDI notes. And if I double click on this, it'll open it up in the piano roll editor. You can also just press E to hide and show that editor. You can also press P to hide and show the piano roll editor to specifically open up the piano roll editor. And you'll also notice there are these like gray vertical lines. That is sustain pedal data. And we'll talk more about that later. But as I was recording, I was using the sustain pedal to draw out the length of some of these notes. And all of this can be edited later on after the fact, if you need to go in and customize and tighten up your sustain pedals. Let's take a look at just the MIDI data and let's try to figure out what the best rhythm to quantize this to is. So right now the grid is set to a 16th note grid, meaning there are 16 subdivisions per bar. If I change the grid up here from 16 to eighth note, you'll see that we're roughly getting one note or one rhythm per line, per grid line. So it looks like we can quantize to an eighth note. So what I'm gonna do is select all, Command A, come over here to my time quantize menu, and I'll set this to an eighth note. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna dial back the strength quite a bit, so we're not getting notes perfectly quantized. We want notes to be closer to their intended grid lines, but we don't want them to be, you know, so perfectly in time that it ruins the, you know, human element of the performance. In fact, I may even pull back that quantization a little bit more. Okay, let's add in a bass line. So let's create a new software instrument. Once again, I'm just going to create an empty channel strip for now. And then I'll go over to the library. I'll go to bass and let's choose the simple foundation bass. Okay, and there's our bass line. Now I do have a couple of notes in here that are incorrect. Let me just drag over those and delete them. I think the rest of these are okay though, but you'll see that some of these are a little ahead of the grid. So let's go ahead and select all and let's quantize to that same eighth note setting that we had for the piano. 
And let's actually dial up the quantization strength a little bit. So you'll see as I pull the strength down, the notes are closer to their original performance. As I pull them up, they're gonna be closer to the grid line. So let's pull it up and not all the way up. All right, and let's give all three of those a listen now. Okay, so that's the basics of using software instruments and recording with a MIDI controller. We are gonna get much deeper into different input methods over the next several videos, and we'll come back to other more advanced quantization features later on in the course. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.